Hey, welcome to John Makes Beats, where John makes beats. I'm your host, Gary, and today we're going to make a beat on the Polyon Tracker. Now, this is a hardware sampler, so in order to get it going, you have to sample into it. That's sample recorder right there, and I have connected into the line in my phone, and I have a sample that I'm going to play, and we'll record it. Let's check it out. Now I have the sample that I want. You can see here in the beginning of the waveform, there's a little bit of extra silence. So we're just going to edit the start point. And you see that it automatically jumped to the point that I wanted it at. So we're just going to crop. Now we're going to save it. I like the auto name feature on the Polyend Tracker. I'm very lazy when it comes to names. I give them default names anyway. I'm terrible at organization. So we're just going to find something cool. Berserk level, clap arrest, aloof card. I like that. All right. So now we're importing the recording into the memory bank on the tracker. So now we've been brought to the sample loader. Uh, you can see that I've already loaded in two other samples into the instruments pool. One is uh, some chords from a Mellotron. And the other is a series of bass notes. Both of them are in the key of the sample, which I think is G flat, F sharp, minor. So let's take the sample that we have and go into sample playback and chop it up. By default, you're in the one shot mode, which is playing it from front to back. But we want the beat slice. And this is gonna let us create slices and go between different play points in the sample to create our own cadence and melody. So the first slice starts at the beginning and every slice that you add after that cuts that slice in half. So whatever slice you have selected, you press add and it slices that in half. So now I have one at the beginning and one at the midpoint. So let's create some obvious uh, slice points. This one's kind of in a random place, so we're going to adjust this. That's good. And then we're going to slice this section in half. And that's where I want it to start there, on that one. We're going to zoom in here so we can see what's going on. See, now I can see more clearly where things start. I kind of just leave it at the beginning of what I'm wanting, which is the bass note, and then if it becomes an issue later, I can just come in here and edit it. We're going to zoom out again because now we're dealing with the macro. So now that I have that, let's go into pattern mode. And uh, you see I have all these chops still. You know, they're all laid out with the, uh, the lit buttons. All of these have chops on them. So I'm going to start by trying to find some sort of two or four bar loop, four if I'm lucky, and then we can build off of that. The sequence goes from uh, top to bottom as opposed to left to right, how most machines do. The resolution of your grid is dependent on your BPM, so if you want more resolution than this, uh, you just have to double your tempo, which is probably what I'm gonna do. I'm at 130 right now. Oh.
Okay, I think I kind of, I think I have something that I want to do, so. So let's plug this in. To make this easier on myself, actually, we're going to go to the uh, sample loader again, and we're going to find something that could be uh, used as a metronome. Lego Welt was nice enough to include some stuff in here. So let's load one of his... Let's see. <coughs> that kind of sounds like a metronome already. All right, let's add that. So let's go back to here. We actually use the track one as the metronome. So we're going to go here. Before we do that, I'm actually going to lower the volume of this so it's not obnoxious. And uh, we're going to put a metronome every fourth step. So one, five, nine, etc. Normally what you would have to do is you'd have to just plug in a note and then go here and then go here and then go here, you know. Um, but with step jump, you can actually program it to uh, pa bypass a certain amount of steps so you can plug in the next one. So if I plug this in here, it automatically goes from one to five. And we're just going to do that for all steps. Now it's pretty easy. Now we're going to go to the volume envelope of this sound. And we're just going to make it a little bit more percussive. We just want it to keep time for us. All right, so now we're on track two. And we're going to go back to a loof card. It's already kind of in time. It's cool. So right now, we've already run out of space. My pattern is probably going to be four times the size of this. So I could find out that this is, you know, 32 steps. And I can just, you know, 32 times four is 128, right? So you just, you know, scroll all the way to 128. Or you can go to more and you can duplicate the pattern. So now we have 64 steps of the notation that we put in on the first half twice. So you can see at the beginning. You see, this is the end of the pattern though, so it just, uh, it just did it twice. Um, it copied over the metronome, which is what I wanted, but now I can redo the second half of this. I'm using step jump to uh, skip around as I delete these things. Now, I, I forgot where I was on the pattern of what I wanted to do. So I went to the last step and it's highlighted here. So now I know where I am in relation to that. to tighten that up that note i knew i was gonna have to but i'll do that later though let's just get the melody in for now i have 64 steps here uh, my progression is 128 steps long i can create a pattern of 128 steps but what i think i'm going to do instead is i'm going to create two patterns one which is this which is the first half of the progression and then the next being the second half and i can create a few versions of each half so that way, when the time comes to put this all together, I have a little bit more, uh, you know, modulation in terms of just plugging in patterns. That way it doesn't feel as uniform. You don't know which one is going to come after which one. You know, it gives me more uh, freedom to plug and play. Uh, so we're going to copy pattern and we're going to the second pattern and we're going to paste it. So I know the, the next note I want is this one. It. Let me feel this out. This is the fourth click. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so this is kind of the pattern that I wanted. Let's just go into the song mode here and plug these in. Let's see, I already have pattern one, slot one. Let's create another slot and then put the second pattern in that one. So let's just hear how this goes from one to the other. So that's the that's the loop I want. However, as you can see, the BPM's not right. The chops are too quick for this BPM, and um, some of the start points are a little messy. The organs are usually fine. It's the it's the notes with the oboe that are a little bit off. So let's go back to sample playback. Let's just tighten some of these up. Let's hear that again and see how it affected it. Now this actually isn't that far away from the tempo that I want. I don't want it to be super quick. I might go to like 150 and see how this sounds. That still sounds a little sloppy on some of the start points, but I'm thinking that once I get the drums in there, you're not really gonna notice it and that sloppiness actually might sound better. So uh, the one thing that's pretty obvious to me is we need to lengthen that one note that cuts off pretty early. That one. So the way I handle a lot of uh, cutoff notes in here because uh, there is time stretch in this machine but it's offline so you know typically what I'll do with time stretch is I'll, I'll mess with it live and try to get a good feeling but I, I don't know what percentage I want or what BPM I want it at because I don't know how I want to stretch it and I'll be here all day. What's What I find faster and in a lot of ways a lot easier and more organic sounding is I'll just reverse the sample point at a at a an optimal place and uh, see if it fixes it. That sounds pretty sick to me. This. I mean, you know, it obviously sounds like it's being reversed at this point, but you know, once everything else is in here, you're not going to notice. Let's actually get rid of the metronome. Let's go back to the first pattern here. So let's find some drums now that we're here. We have this much, so let's uh, build around it. Bricks collection I downloaded from BitTorrent. So let's just uh, select one of these and play at the beginning. It's done. We're done. The beat's done. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not. But it's good to get a kind of a rough idea at first and see. Okay, that, no contest, that's the one. So we're gonna take that and put it in beat slice. Let's see what auto slice does here. Does a lot, shit. I guess we could just adjust some of these points. Now I, I know it can be a pain to chop this much or go with this in depth with your chopping. Uh, but I find that the more I do in this phase, the easier the rest of the beat becomes. 
Because now if I, ha- if I have an idea that goes against how it normally goes, the phrase, uh, I have the control to change it. Or I don't have to you know, be at the mercy of my quote-unquote laziness earlier. And honestly, that's what I find makes a good beat more often than not is patience. <laughs> you know, the, the patience to be able to listen, the patience to be able to really, you know, deconstruct something that way when you have the inspiration later on that it gives you, you know, you have that granularity to do what you want. Okay, enough of that. Let's, uh, now that I have some pull the part drums here, let's plug some stuff in. So we got the first, you know, two bars of that drum loop in here without messing it around. And so for this next part, I'm just going to have the first little part of that second half of the drum loop come in until that snare. And then it'll just give a little bit of variety. It'll make your ear feel like you're not hearing the same thing over and over again, even though you pretty much are. And then maybe some toms. Let's see how that goes. It's good for the turnaround. Okay, so now that we have that, we can kind of fit the chops onto that loop and get it riding a little bit better. So this is where micro move comes in, my favorite on this thing. Basically takes you off the grid. And you can be a little bit more funky with it. Okay. Okay, that's that's good enough. And let's move on to the next half. And we'll try to find some variety in the drums here. But we're going to do pretty much the same thing again, just, uh, you know, give it a little bit some. Let's see if that works. For now, that's good. And then we'll nudge these back a little bit. Now let's hear all of that in succession. Okay, cool. So I, I brought up the tempo a little bit. We might get rid of this reverse playback here. Just, uh, there's not as much ground that needs to get covered now because we raised the tempo a little bit. Yeah, it's smooth. All right. Now that we have the drums and the samples, I did have a bass and I had some chords from a Mellotron. And let's see if we can get those in here. So let's go back to the sample playback. And we're going to choose... These were also auto names. I chose a luring sound for the the Mellotron. Sounds pretty alluring to me. All right, so let's uh, let's go to Beat Slice, and you know, there's not a lot of uh, transient here or gaps, so I'm not having high hopes for Auto Slice. But let's just see. Yeah, that really didn't do anything. So I'll have to do this on my own. That's fine. All right, we have all those now. Um, those are a little bit low, so we're going to go in here and turn those up. Cool. Okay, before we plug those in, let's also do the bass. So go back to sample playback. Resonant pet. I like that one. I like that name for the bass. 
go to bead slice here. And I have higher hopes for auto slice on this. Hell yeah. That went a little bit better. Let's raise the volume on this. And mind you, I'm not a music theory whiz, so I usually just have to hear it out. Sounds okay to me. So I'm just going to put a low pass on the bass because it's kind of uh, resonant and squelchy for the situation. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with the samples for the bass because they seem to be cutting off sooner than I want, but I was trying to save space here. Reverse playback to elongate them. So the cool thing about this uh, reverse playback is it's not as limited as it may seem. It actually reverses the playback at the point of contact with this uh, automation. So it doesn't just start it at the end of the sample in reverse. It catches it right where you ask it to. And then... You can kind of play a little game of Pong back and forth to try to get it to kind of sustain. The bass has some honk to it. I mean, I've left it like this so I can hear it as I, as I adjust it. You see how I'm kind of beginning to go back and forth? Now we're getting somewhere. This sounds pretty cool. We're gonna move these a little bit more groovier places. So now let's hear us all together. Now we got some. That makes me, this gets me excited, man. All right, so now let's get the chords in and see if we can find some. Okay, that's it. So I tune up the chords an octave so I can get a better listen to what was working melodically because I was having a hard time with where it was. And so now I actually kind of like it pitched up. That's it. Now that we have a program, we can turn it back down because that would be a bad idea. I actually want this to pan uh, with an LFO to give more of a field of depth. So go in here. So you have panning and then you have an envelope and then an LFO to play with. I want the LFO and we can choose how fast it is. get a little bit of a of a stereo there because the the samples when they get brought into the tracker uh, they turn to mono so um that helps a lot and now let's 
hear how it turns around. I actually don't like the one chord coming back on the second part. Okay, so take off step jump. I'm gonna delete these. I like it kind of breathing a little bit. Yeah, because we're not gonna have those chords all the time, so that would be a good time to like introduce them into the beat. So now that I have these two, um, patterns pretty full and, and I feel like this is good. Um, now comes the time for variation. So we're going to copy this first pattern and we're going to go to pattern three and we're going to paste it. And now we can make variations and give some more life or spice. So this one, I'm going to have the, the kick not be anywhere um but at the same time to make sure that it's more impactful i'm going to cut the volume on uh, the bass here just in case it, it it did come in on another pattern and then um maybe something else with the drums This would be a good place to put another hi-hat. It's a good place to put a little tom there, right? That's cool. And let's create another variation of the second half. So let's go to copy and we'll paste. Actually, we're gonna leave that alone. We're gonna to go to this one and we're gonna take out the organ. Or the, cor the, the chorus. I've turned it into, <laughs> it sounds like an organ now. Let's just plug some of these in and see what, see what else we need, so. So we're going to So you see what I did? I brought this part up so that way you don't hear the voice at the beginning. That way, you know, uh I, we don't want to hear that that vocal turn every time. That's more of a of a treat. It's not happening every time. So let's add some more patterns here. Uh, we're gonna add slot. Now we have pattern three. So I like all of this. I think all of this is good. However, I don't want the organs to come in on that second part, pattern four. Um, but I do want something to be there because it feels a little bit uh, lesser. Let's find like a sound effect or something to bring in right there. And uh, then we'll probably just call it a day. Let's go back to the sample loader and let's try to find something to fill in that space. It doesn't even need to be musical. It just needs to be cool. <laughs> Yeah. I want something cool, man. CD-ROM, that's cool. So FX, what do we have in terms of in the way of FX? Hmm. 
We have Portrait's Bird. Now let's chop this up to these uh, two notes. Let's see if we could tune it down, see how that sounds. <laughs> like that and then we're gonna automate the volume so that way it, it you know like the 16 levels sort of like volume fade away you are start here and this is what 50 51 okay so let's work our way back so two here eight 14 21 25, 29, 38, 46. I'm just trying to find incremental values here. So it'll sound like it's fading away naturally. That works for me, folks. So let's make the panning more obvious. Let's change this to pattern six and let's play it from the beginning and just see how it sounds. Sound effect is a little too loud still, and it's and it's it's a little too late. So too loud and too late. There we go. All right, and then I need one more pattern. I need uh, six. So I'm gonna create kind of more of a, a, a abstract kind of like. Beatless pattern. I'm gonna remove all these drums except for the, the roll. This is pattern seven. I'm gonna go at the end of this song mode here. I'm gonna add another slot and I'm gonna go to seven. guys i think that's it you know the beat's never done but you got to stop somewhere and uh, i think i'll stop here uh, thank you for joining me and i uh, hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time thanks Boing.